when, when that happens and the game's tight at the end, what do you tell your guys afterwards when you just have to to escape the game? No, we, they shot 42 from the field tonight, 31 from three. I mean, it's, it's not just about the fourth quarter. It's 48 minutes. So um, I didn't think this was going to be an easy game. There is no easy game in the NBA. Every team has talent. Every team has pride. Um, so, you know, yes, 35 points is not what they want. They were down. They got very aggressive. And um, obviously you want better fourth quarter defense. But we haven't held an opponent to 42% in a long time. We haven't held an opponent to 31 from three in a long time. So uh, if you minimize the turnovers, 18 points, uh, you make your free throws and you make some open threes, uh, this is not a four-point game. You know, it's easily a double-figure game. But, uh, you know, give Charlotte a lot of credit. You know, they came in here and uh, threw everything at us and, you know, we were able to get the win. Do you find yourself still searching for ways to describe what Nicole is doing? I had no idea he had 27 rebounds. I knew he had a lot of rebounds, but uh, I haven't seen that number uh, very often. And uh, Nick was telling me that, I guess, first time since Wilt in 1968, the players had 35-plus, 25-plus boards and 10 assists. So uh, <laughs> 50 from the field, I mean, that, what he does is just amazing every night. So uh, just really thankful he's, he's wearing a Nuggets uniform. Sometimes it feels like when you're all, you have to go back to Nicole at times, and, and you wanted him out there as much as possible. So you got, got 40 minutes. Is this just one of those games where you could say, we have to get a win, I need to get Nicole back out there? Well, just our bench wasn't giving us anything, and that's really what it was. I mean, end of the first quarter, start of the second quarter, it was a 13-0 run. I mean, um, start of the fourth quarter, it was a 6-0 run. They called a timeout. You know, uh, a double-figure lead is dwindling down to six points. So... Um, obviously, you know, when you're coming off the bench, you have an obligation. You know, I know guys get pissed off when they come out of a game. Well, if, if you're playing better, you're not coming out of the game. Simply stated. I can't afford to watch a 13-0 run and sit there and do nothing about it. So, yeah, the luxury of having Nicole Jokic is when things go sideways, when things aren't going our way, I know I can get him back in the game and he's going to settle us down. And uh, that's what happened tonight. That second quarter run, That seemed like the type of defense that we're hoping to see from having Aaron and Bruce and KCP this season. Is that yeah. You got that level engagement that <clears throat> to yeah, I mean, 20 fast break points, obviously. Uh, and I think it's a really important point, obviously, getting Contavious Cola Pope, adding Bruce Brown, you know, uh, having a healthy Aaron Gordon, getting Jamal back. Like, there's no way in hell we should be 28th in defensive efficiency. That's just the bottom line. Like, I, you can't tell me that in my eight years in Denver, this is our worst defensive team. No one can ever convince me of that. And, uh, you know, so that's where I got to continue to find ways to help these guys, but also realize that it's a lot of new faces out there taking time to maybe get adjusted, get adapted. But uh, that was a great way to close that second quarter. I don't know, it was 17 to uh, five, whatever it was. And we, we closed by getting stops, to your point, Matt, and that fueled our offense. And uh, I think that is a snapshot of who we need to be, because when we play that way, we're really, really effective and tough to beat. Um, Coach, during the game, how much were you, how much were you aware that you watched the performance that had to do with the NCAA? Not at all. You know, I, I know he's a hell of a player. I know yeah, the shots that he makes, especially when when Nicola makes threes, uh, two for four tonight. Like when he makes threes, I think he becomes a completely different animal. Like really unguardable, and he's almost unguardable every night. But that adds a, just a whole totally different part to the game. It really stretches the defense out. But um, I didn't know it was a 40, 27, and 10 night, but I knew that he was having just another Nikola Jokic stellar performance, efficient. And it's not just about Nicola, his ability to make every one of his teammates better, make the right read. We'll, we'll draw up a play for Nicola to catch it at the nail. He attracts such a crowd, guys move without it, and he finds guys for layups or open threes. And, um, you know, obviously we got to do a better job of knocking down our shots. But I think last five games we were last in three-point attempts. You know, so a, we did a little bit better job tonight with 33. Um, but, yeah, you know, Nicola is a, um, a generational talent. Coach, Jamal had 11 assists tonight, but he seemed to struggle with shooters and turnovers to What did you 
Well, I, I, what, I don't want to go into great detail, but I give uh, Jamal Murray a ton of credit for battling through tonight. He was not feeling great. Um, his knee was not feeling great. And um, we started off the game saying, let's see how you feel to start. If it's not going well, you don't feel right, we can get you out. And it's a long season. He started the game. I didn't think he was moving great. First time out, I talked to him, pulled him to the side. He said, no, I just I, I want to I battle through it. Let me keep playing. And so, yeah, you can look at the 211 from the field, 06 from three. I give him a ton of credit. Like, we don't win this game without him. 11 assists, three turnovers is an unbelievable ratio. Uh, I know he's going to be really hard on himself for not making threes and, and missing a couple of key free throws, but I think people don't understand how tough Jamal is, both mentally and physically. He's able to play through things that a lot of guys aren't able to. So um, he's a tough kid, man, and I, and I have a lot of respect and love for him. Well, I think it's probably, I mean, I would have to watch the film tonight. I mean, but let's be honest, it's not the first night the bench has been a, it's been a concern. Uh, and obviously we try to get Jamal with that group to try to steady, steady that ship a little bit. And I, I guess the biggest challenge is for me, like, so if you're not scoring, all right, I mean, shots may not go down if you generate good shots. But if you're not scoring, you got to get stops. It can't be you're not scoring and you're not getting stops. And that's what I felt like it was tonight. So... Um, and it's not just on them. You know, I, I never want to be that guy or that coach that says it's our. No, it's I'm the head coach. I have to 29 games. I think it is now. I have to find a way to help that group. And it's, it's just as much my fault as well as, as it is the five guys on the floor. It's collective, man. I we all got to find a way to be better because it seems like every night get off to a decent start. End of that first quarter. We're all like, what's going to happen? You know, and that's a really tough way to, to play for those guys, tough way to coach, and you, you can't play like that. So, again, it's, uh, I put it on me first and foremost, Matt. i got to continue to find ways, lineups, rotations, play calls, defensive game plan, whatever it is, to help that group. On that point, tonight you try to do combination of players. Is part of helping them try more and more combinations? Is it instilling confidence, mixing up you know, scheme or, or, or what you're doing? What all is involved in that? I think everything you just mentioned, I mean, like trying different guys, right? I mean, the bottom line is we're trying to win games. Like, you know, when I make a substitution, it's never personal. So I, I don't like that guy. I'm taking him. No, it, I'm trying to do whatever I can do to help this team win a game. And whether the, if I put a guy in and he's not playing well, well, I have an obligation to put somebody else in the game. I'm searching for guys. You know, I thought Christian rebounded well tonight. He was aggressive. He didn't turn down open shots. You know, last game I threw out D. Reed. Tonight I put Vlatko in. I mean, like it was Jamal's knee, and then early in the first quarter, KCP got kneed, and he was out. So all of a sudden your sub-chart and rotation is kind of all over the place. But um, that's my job, Adam, is to find guys that can – go out there and play and play effectively and efficiently. And if I have to cycle through guys on a bench, so be it. It's, uh, you know, it's all about winning games. That's, that's what I get paid to do. It has nothing to do with whether I like you or not. This is a business, and uh, we're going to go with the guys that can help us win. And uh, that's what we do. You always talk about the best brand of basketball for guys defending on the run. And in that stretch heading into halftime, when you are getting soft and you are running, I guess, what are you thinking when they're going in transition? Is it fun for you to watch these players put on the show, particularly Bruce, the KCP and AG, the way they were throwing it up and throwing it down there and in that stretch? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't looked recently, but I think a fast break points per game are all season long have been really high for us. You know, a, a marked difference and improvement. Um, and that's the carrot. You know, that's the reward. All right. If you guys are willing to defend, if you're willing to shrink and give multiple effort and contest and rebound, the floor is yours. No, I'm not. I'm not one of those guys who wants to call a play every time down the floor. I don't. This is not like 1988 basketball. This is the new generation of basketball, and you have to allow your players to play to their strengths. So it is fun. Sometimes a little scary, but overall it's fun because you're allowing guys to have some freedom and creativity, and it's artistic. It's beautiful at times, and uh, that's what you want. So uh, it's a it's another home win. Uh, against a team that on paper most people said we should have blown them out. It doesn't work like that. Uh, and I know that, you know, to Mike's earlier point, fourth quarter wasn't great, but overall, this is our best defensive game in a long time. So I'm going to put that in the pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs>